Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Madan 
मनमोहन की श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्रा महारानी की श्री श्री गौर नेताई की श्रील प्रभुपाद की समावेत गौर भक्त वृंद की कलियुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की ओम ज्ञान तिरंद ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षु मुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थात भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पद कमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साइत साबदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे वाचाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवत्युतम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम Welcome all of you for the Shrimad Bhagavatam class this morning at the lotus feet of Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan. So we are reciting from the Shrimad Bhagavatam fourth canto, twenty-eighth chapter, text number forty-seven. उत्तिष्टोत्तिष्टराज ऋषे दधि में खला दस्युभ्य क्षत्रबंधुभ्यो बिभ्यती पातुरमर्हसी उत्तिष्टोत्तिष्टराज ऋषे इवां बुदधि मेखला दस्युभ्य क्षत्रबंधुभ्यो बिभ्यती पातुलमर्हसी पातुमर्घ उत्तिष्टोत्तिष्टराज ऋषे इमा बुदधि मेखला दस्युभ्य क्षत्रबंधुभ्यो बिभ्यती पातुमर्घसी
उत्तिष्ठोत्तिष्ठराजर्षे मां वदति मे खला उत्तिष्ठोत्तिष्ठराजर्षे इमां वदति मे खला उत्तिष्ठोत्तिष्ठराजर्षे इमां वदधि मे खला दस्य क्षत्रबंधुभ्यो उत्तिष्ठ प्लीज गेट अप Uttishtha, please get up. Raja Rishay, O saintly king, Imam, this earth, Udadhi, by the ocean, Mekhalam, surrounded, Dasyubhyaha, from the rogues, Kshatrabandubhyaha, from the unclean kings, Vibhyatim, very much afraid, Patum, to protect arhasi you ought translation purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shri prabhupad ki oh best of kings please get up get up just see this world surrounded by water and infested with rogues and so called kings this world is very much afraid and it is your duty to protect her so this is uh, spoken by uh, Vaidarbi to Malayadvaja, right now. So you all can repeat after me. Oh, best of kings, please get up. Get up. Just see this world surrounded by water and infested with rogues and so-called kings. This world is very much afraid and it is your duty to protect her. Whenever an Acharya comes following the superior orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his representative, he establishes the principles of religion as enunciated in the Bhagavad Gita. Religion means abiding by the orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Religious principles begin from the time one surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is the Acharya's duty to spread a bona fide religious system and induce everyone to bow down before the Supreme Lord. One executes the religious principles by rendering devotional service, specifically the nine items like hearing, chanting and remembering. Unfortunately, when the Acharya disappears, uh, the rogues and uh, non-devotees take advantage and immediately begin to introduce unauthorized principles in the name of so-called Swamis, Yogis, Philanthropists, welfare workers, and so on. Actually, human life is meant for executing the orders of the Supreme Lord, and this is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya jivam namaskuru Mame vaishyasi yukpaivam atmanam mad parayanaha Engage your mind always in thinking of me, and become my devotee, offer obeisances and worship me, being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. Lord Krishna says this in the Bhagavad Gita 9.34 verse. The main business of human society is to think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead at all times, to become His devotees, to worship the Supreme Lord and to bow down, bow down before Him. The Acharya, the authorized representative of the Supreme Lord, establishes these principles. But when He disappears, things once again become disordered. The perfect disciples of the Acharya try to relieve the situation by sincerely following the instructions of the spiritual master. At the present moment, practically the entire world is afraid of rogues and non-devotees. Therefore, this Krishna consciousness movement is started to save the world from religious principles. Everyone should cooperate with this movement in order to bring about actual peace and happiness in the world. So the world uh, uh, requires faithful 
devotees of the Lord, uh, who are actually Acharya. Acharya means one who shows an example. He lives by his example. And you derive a lot of strength uh, from living examples, huh? living, walking, talking scriptures. Huh? Like we all adore Anandamai Prabhu here in this temple. Why? Because uh, for decades, uh, uh, faithfully, he has followed in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada. Huh? And uh, anybody who comes to the temple, many people have come, many have gone. Huh? Some have stayed. But somebody who stays, uh, for uh, 30, 40, 50, 60 years in life and without giving up the lotus feet of the spiritual master remains loyal all through one's life. Huh? So that is a very striking example for everybody uh, that the process works. Huh? The process of Krishna consciousness works because unless you have some strong taste you cannot hold on for a long time. Generally the jivas no, they are uh, pleasure-seeking by nature. So, just like you put some sugar cubes, ants will come running and surround it. You will see that. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you give hay to the cows. They are not so interested. But you give good gola, you know. Good gola is uh, jaggery. Huh? All the cows will come running, pushing one another. Huh? You can easily see that in this world, uh, we all are attracted to something. The whole world is attracted to glitter and glamour, all the more so in this age of Kali Yuga. Jaya Shri Shri Radha Manan Ki, Shri Shri Gaurnitai Ki, Shri Shri Jagannath Bala Subhadra Maharani Ki. So, uh, when the whole world is running in one direction, uh, in a downward spiral, at that time, the devotees of the Lord uh, having faith in the Lord, walking the right path, uh, it, re it requires a uh, great amount of energy to go in the forward direction. And uh, that becomes all the more easy for us when we have living examples. Uh, uh, those who are living and those who are blissfully situated and those who are leading, those who are not only just leading, they are willing to guide. Uh, so, first of all, example itself is great. Uh, and if somebody is leading from the front like an engine, huh, that is even more wonderful. And somebody is willing to guide the path, say what is right, what is wrong, and to enlighten the people and educate the people, uh, rectify the uh, anomalies. Huh, and uh, that is even more great. And if somebody can create a system and a facility and a structure for practicing devotion service, that is not great, that is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So, if you see, in our disciplic line, you know, we have had, uh, after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, went back to Godhead, you know, the Goswamis did their part well. And after the Goswami, subsequently, you know, Jiva Goswami was the youngest one amongst them. Uh, and uh, he guided the three great souls, Shamananda Pandit, Srinivas Acharya, and Narutamada Stakur. Uh, and after that, the Babajis in our line, many of them saw that, a uh, lot of uh, corruption came into this world in the name of uh, devotional service. Some people were cheating. They became sahajyas. Sahajyas means those who took the path of devotional life cheaply. Um, and a lot of apasampradayas came. Uh, some 13 apasampradayas. Apasampradaya means the deviants. Deviant sex. Uh, so when they came, some of the Babajis who were pure, they resorted to seclusion. Uh, they went to the dham into a very secluded place and just took the mala and chanting all day three lakh names, two lakh names. They thought that the Kali Yuga has started now. We just chant the whole name and go back to Godhead. So because of that, gradually the number of Vaishnavas reduced on the planet. So things uh, became very deadly and uh, corruption increased more and more. So uh, later on in our line, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is the first revolutionary Acharya who protested against the deviant sects mm -hmm. by writing more than a hundred books, mm -hmm. by himself uh, giving lectures, and he also uh, instituting Namahatta. He has written a very famous book called as Bodhurma Kalpatavi. Mm -hmm. So that book gives uh, a blueprint for how to preach and expand preaching in Bhakti Ruksha groups. Mm -hmm. So based on that book, His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj 
made that book Bhakti Vriksha Manual based on that book. It gives a kind of idea on how to make small, small groups of Vaishnavas living in pockets. So they all take care of each other, stay together, come together. And very simple, basic practice, chant Hare Krishna, perform Aritis, bow down to Lord Krishna, study Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam, offer Bhoga, accept Prasad, distribute Prasad, <coughs> inspire the people to uh, remain loyal and faithful to the devotional practices, accept a Guru. Hmm? And then in this way, uh, the whole group of devotees can faithfully practice whole life and go back to Godhead. Besides doing that, they also can multiply, hmm? bring known people, little by little, they multiply the groups. Hmm? In this way, I heard that Bhaktivinoda Thakur had more than 1500 groups or so. Hmm? Although he was sitting in Godruma Dweeb, he was preaching very vigorously all over Bengal. And uh, in those days, there were no emails or WhatsApp. Huh? Uh, they only had uh, snail mail, hmm? which will come by postman. So they vigorously was preaching. Hmm? But he prayed to Lord that give me a um, powerful son who will actually take this far and wide. Hmm? So then he got Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, who opened 64 mathas. Hmm? So in those days, mathas were unheard of. Huh? Every spiritualist will have to depend on oneself for practice. Huh? You practice in your place, I practice in my place. It was like that. But Bhaksan Thakur opened mathas. And uh, mathas had beautiful Radha Gandharvika Giridhari temple will be there. Huh? There is a place where the printing press was there. And uh, books will be printed and distributed. Hmm? There was accommodation for the sadhus. Huh? Then there were prasadam hall where the congregation living outside, they can come, take darshan, take part in aratis, bow down to Lord and take darshan of the beautiful deities. And he also arranged for dharamas, you know, dharamas on all, all the walls, colorful display of Lord's pastimes, Radha Krishna pastimes, Chaitanya Leela, colorfully made. So visitors, eyes are immediately caught to see the beautiful dharamas and they discuss what is this pastime, Jagai Madai are creating trouble, and then how uh, Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda are delivering them. People hear the pastimes and get purified in their heart, come one step closer to Krishna. So in this way, Bhaksan Saraswati Thakur did a very organized thing. Nice display of dharamas, nice darshan of the deities, prasadam for all the visitors, matha for the sadhus to live, uh, and provisions, uh, facilities like uh, prasadam hall and the satsang hall and everything and books getting printed and going out. Just see how, what a wonderful arrangement. Huh? So this is the beauty of an Acharya. When Acharya comes, <clears throat> he brings about order. Hmm? In the world, it's full of chaos. There is so much of religion going on. Huh? <clears throat> but Acharya brings about an order huh? when he comes. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a beautiful example. Uh, 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 sometimes you see in the rainy season, you know, the uh, frogs will croak. They will make a sound. Right now, when there's a thunder in the sky, thar, 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 thunder. immediately the frogs will start croaking, peacocks will start dancing. And peacocks also make uh, sweet sounds, seeing the cloud in the sky. Like they make sounds. Huh? So, in, to express their delight. Hmm? Similarly, in the Bhagavatam it is said that when the Acharya lives in a matha, he takes the gong and plays in the morning. Dang, 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 like that. When he prays in the morning, huh? you know, yeah. immediately all the disciples will jump up from their bed huh? and immediately they go for a bath huh? and then they get ready and wear tilak in 12 parts of their body and come to the temple hall and bow down in front of the Acharya and then in front of the deities. And the Acharya in inspires them to recite the Vedic mantras and shlokas and everything. So, the brahmacharis and the celibates living in the temple matha, they are inspired by a living example of an acharya. Hmm? He himself sets an example. So this example is given in the Bhagavatam. In those days, there were lakhs of gurukul in India. Huh? Several lakhs of gurukul. In each of the gurukul, there was a guru, acharya, and then the disciples staying together. So these people were purified by spiritual practice, and they were enlightened in the Vedic literature. And then they would set out in the society to have a deeper penetration going to the homes and become Purohit. Purohit means benefit the householders. Huh? Or they would become Brahmins or they would become Pracharakas. Huh? 
in this way they would reach the knowledge to the people and the whole society lived a value based life you know, of character morality ethics and spirituality so the whole society was very calm cool collected peaceful satisfied grateful humble you know. everything was very nice so uh, acharya is one who not only has disciples who follow him acharya produces many acharyas you know. he produces many many great acharyas. that's what bhagwan sri thakur when he did this he established 64 matas in india and uh, uh, when he left shila bhagwan sri thakur he wanted to see that this beautiful moment of lord chaitanya uh, should be preserved protected and it is carefully handed over and it will take uh, it will be taken ahead like that but i don't want to take any specific names but there were two prominent disciples of his one was taking care of all the properties huh? lands and everything another one was a very great pandita learned scholar huh? these two people were the prominent ones and there was a kind of competition for the succession who will be accepted as the successor of bhagwan sri thakur huh? and then naturally they formed groups and there was a cleavage in relationships offenses flying back and forth result was all the six four matas were taken by different different disciples who were running it individually uh, and uh, shila bhakti sanskar thakur had said that in the material world transmitting spiritual wisdom is not a ordinary thing there has to be a very organized approach you know? just like if you put a bundle of sticks together and tie it you cannot break it mm-hmm. but if the sticks become separated anybody can easily break it so shila bhakti sanskar thakur had told them that you, you all should stay united and then form a gbc gbc is governing body commissioners hmm? make a gbc uh, and the gbc leadership should be accepted by all and then they will come together and frame policies and everything everybody else will follow and all the mathas have to be united that was his plan but then soon after his uh, departure uh, there was a cleavage and uh, uh, and therefore although the six four mathas were led by different people Uh, eventually they became weak and uh, because of becoming separated mm-hmm. so uh, like you might have heard the story of how once there were four cows which are good friends mm-hmm. but a lion wanted to eat them but whenever the lion went to them all the cows with their big horns would do like this and lion would run away huh? because they were united huh? so when you are united you can drive away maya very easily mm-hmm. but then lion made a i mean lion hatched a plot so he went to the one one cow individually and you know, they put something in the ears huh? and all the cows became angry with each other so they went in four different directions huh? at that time lion found that it is easy now they all have become singled out now so this is the trick of maya that she singles you out and slaughters you huh? that's what the lions did so if there is a quarrel amongst devotees that's the greatest curse in kali yuga because the very meaning of the word kali means quarrel as soon as we quarrel with devotees we bring the ego our false ego and have tussle with devotees and then you find fault with someone and they find fault with you and there is a cleavage between the two that means kali is in action kali's job is what to separate the devotees and make the devotees vulnerable to maya and they can be knocked off very easily and that started happening uh, and uh, our shila prabhupad bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad you know he was at the time a householder in his purva ashrama uh, and uh, he used to come to the matha and he would sing very sweetly and uh, he also would talk very eloquently but because he was a grihastha he won't sit on the vyasasana he would put one sanyasi in the vyasasana and who may not be able to speak so much but he would sit down and then he would give lecture huh? because anyways he would tell him you speak huh? so prabhupad sang kirtan also and he spoke also he was a businessman hmm? later on after his sons grew up at a right age after 50 prabhupad took vana prastha uh, and went to delhi and vrindavan so he would be shuttling between vrindavan and delhi making this back to godhead magazines he worked very hard huh? he would personally purchase papers from the market and you know he would be carrying on the head he would go and give it to the printing press huh? and get the magazines printed would go to the tea shops and selling the magazines 
and nobody would buy many people would be lazy to buy and why to spend money people are not ready so then prabhupada wrote an article no time disease of kali yuga <laughs> he wrote an article on that and somebody told uh, uh, prabhupada you, know, you are preaching all these things look at this crazy fellows then prabhupada asked who is crazy you know he wrote an article any comments you will hear he make new article huh? in line with shastra and he would, he would distribute like that he worked very hard Uh, sometimes he would be struggling to reach out to people wherever there was opportunity platform for him to speak huh? he would uh, go and speak about bhagavad gita about shrimad bhagavatam krishna consciousness he wanted to wake up everybody in kalira it was a big struggle during his days in vrindavan and in jansi huh? so he endeavored hard huh? and later on on the order of his guru huh? you know he had taken sanyas and then he went to the west and the rest is history you know how what a miracle happened so prabhupada following in the footsteps of his guru also brought about a great order prabhupada writes in krishna book a very beautiful analogy from the shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto there is a light of the bhagavat prabhupada made that book in that you will find example given in the bhagavatam there is one chapter on the uh, rainy season in vrindavan it is said sometimes in the rainy season the jugnu you know jugnu is a glow bomb and be glowing huh? this glow worm looks very attractive only in the night but in the day time when the sun comes the glow worm has no value huh? similarly prabhupada says that uh, there are many bogus movements have come in kali yuga huh? there are so many swamis claiming to be god huh? and there are people who are social welfare workers and philanthropists and altruists huh? you know but they wear a religious garb but they don't tell people about god hmm? they don't tell people to surrender to god they simply feed food or open hospitals or open schools and uh, they say that we have done this much service we must social service we have done but they don't actually tell one word about god to people hmm? so and they and, and they also wear the religious garb also so proper says these are like jugnus the jugnu cannot give light hmm? yeah. but on the other hand you will see when the sun rises in the morning hmm? at that time all the jugnu all the glow worms become useless huh? at that time whole world gets light so the spiritual movement prabhupada says a true vaishnava is one who gives enlightenment to the world huh? he gives enlightenment what is the main enlightenment who are you who is god and what is your loving relationship with him huh? that's the main central theme huh? between the lord and the devotee actually if you go through the vedic literature the first step is to inquire about the soul huh? once you know i am not the body i am the soul uh, you understood that then uh, as a soul then there is karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga bhakti yoga different yogas karma yoga is a path of action do your activities and offer the fruits to god gnana yoga is a path of knowledge you use your mind to speculate and try to find out uh, god and you end up with understanding the aham brahmasmi huh? or impersonal brahman huh? and Uh, ashtanga yoga is a path of uh, concentration and focus with the intelligence huh? use your intelligence to focus on the super soul in your heart dhyana avasthita tadgate manasa pashyantiyam yogino yogi is meditate in their own heart uh, on the super soul who is standing in the heart they know the personality of godhead huh? and then when you go beyond that because uh, super soul worshipers they only have reverence for the lord huh? whereas when you go beyond that to bhakti yoga that it's a path of heart path of love so in the path of love and now one begins to love krishna then the seva begins huh? because yogis don't do seva they just meditate on the lord and they just admire the lord that's all huh? whereas when you become a bhakta then you feel that oh lord is my most worshipable and lovable object let me render some service to him so then you have a deity you decorate him you dress him you ornament him you feed him you celebrate festivals for him you circumambulate him you bow down to him remember him at every moment huh? so in this way one can come to the uh, vaidhi sadhana bhakti and then in sadhana bhakti as one progresses more and more one's uh, attraction affection for the lord increases then one enters the spiritual realm of five rasas huh? you know dasya ras sakya ras vachala ras madhuri ras all those rasas and all Hmm. at that stage one understands uh, krishna is akhila rasamrita murti huh? all the rasas or the loving exchanges are only truly possible with the supreme lord krishna in this world also uh, 
that is the imitation of those rasas in the spiritual world <clears throat> krishna has his friends we also make our friends in this world hmm? in the spiritual world krishna has gopis who, who are uh, he is the lover and they are beloved huh? in this world also people have romantic affairs huh? krishna is a child of yashoda nanda here also we become child of somebody but what is the difference between that rasa and this rasa there krishna is the center and we all are around him huh? loving service Whereas in the material world, the jiva thinks, I am the center. Huh? Like you are the child. When mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, everybody loves you and, you know, shovels you with affection, you are very jolly. Because we think, who is the center? I am the center. Sometimes in home, you find the child, he gets a younger brother or younger sister. Then everyone's attention turns to younger one. So now the elder one thinks, hey, what is this? Nobody pays attention to me. Sometimes pinches the younger one. Huh? And the younger one is cry crying, and the mother father come running, hey, why did you pinch him? He says, why? then why everybody is looking at him, what about me? Huh? So, in this world, everybody wants to be the center, huh? this material world. So, it's a perverted reflection of that. Uh, so, the society, friendship, love in this world is temporary. Prabhupada says, if you make Krishna your friend, that friend will never die. Huh? If you make Krishna your son, that son will never die. If you make Krishna your lover, that your uh, love for Krishna, romance will be eternal. Huh? That will never be lost. In this world, even if a boy and girl love very much each other, how long can they live? When they get old, uh, uh, both the souls have to die and then they go to two different destinations in this world. Huh? Whereas our love for God is eternal, imperishable, everlasting. Hmm? So, uh, and then one can study Srimad Bhagavatam to understand how this loving exchange uh, Lord does. <clears throat> there is no other commodity huh, between the Lord and the devotee except pure love. Hmm? Therefore, Shuddha Bhaktas, pure devotees don't need anything in this world uh, to deal with the Lord. Lord, simply uh, you need a flower or a uh, fruit to offer him, that's all. Hmm? So when one comes to this platform, uh, one can experience the highest joy which is inexplicable. Sukham matyantikam jatat buddhigrahya matindriyam Veti yatrana chai vayam sitas chalati tatpataha Yam labdva cha param labham manyate nadikam tataha Yasmin sito na dukke na guru naapi vichaljate Tam vidya dukka sam yogam biyogam yoga samstitam This is even in a stage of uh, Ashtanga Yogi's meditation one experience such happiness. What to speak of uh, experiencing loving rasa with the Lord? Huh? That is extraordinary. Uh, so Krishna is Akhila Rasamrita Murti and what does the devotee do? Krishna Arte Akhila Cheshta. Huh? Which means Krishna Arte means for Krishna. Akhila means all. Cheshta means endeavor. That means my Kaya, Vacha, Manasa, I will offer everything to Krishna. You know the famous verse? Kaya na Vacha, Manasendri Yairva, Budhyatmanava, Prakrde Swabhavat, Karomi Yadyat Sakalam Parasmai, Shri Manarayana Yeti Samarpayami. I'll offer my body, my mind, my words, all the activities with these three things I'll offer at the lotus feet of the Supreme God. Huh? There's another nice verse which says, Stitihi seva gatir yatra smritish chinta stutir vachaha bhuyat sarvat pana vishnau madhiyam pai chetitam. He's saying, uh, Stitihi seva means if I'm situated in one temple, I will do seva there. Huh? Siddhi Seva, Gatir Yatra. If I am going from one place to another, it should be some Yatra. Huh? Yatra means some holy pilgrimage. Hmm? Uh, Stitihi Seva, Gatir Yatra, Smritis Chinta. If a devotee thinks that thought is related to Krishna. Hmm? Stutir Vachaha. If a devotee is speaking, that is in glorification of Krishna only. Hmm? Bhuyat Sarvatmana Vishnu is saying, May all my body, mind, words be engaged in your service. Huh? Uh, let all my efforts be engaged only in relation to you. Something similar, he said this. Vritrasar also says, what is the famous verse? Aham hare tava padai kamula dasano daso bhavita asmi bhuyaha manasmaret asupater gunam ste grinita vakarma karo tukayaha. Very, very beautiful verse. He's saying, Aham Hare Tavapadai Kamula. Oh Lord Hari, I have no other aspiration 
other than becoming dasanu daso bhavitas me boya i just want to become servant of the servant of the servant of your devotees uh, and what do you want to do by becoming servant of the servant of your devotees he says mana smare i want to remember you with my heart asu pater gunamste grinita vakarma karotu ka with my body i want to serve you with my mind i want to remember you and with my vani i want to glorify you uh, this is actually the highest platform of uh, pure devotion so the acharya actually comes to give this uh, and anything short of this is a compromise uh, the acharya does not compromise in giving the truth to the people hmm? because sometimes people say that you know if you give food if you give clothing then people will come then we can teach and things like that people say but actually people don't take it seriously people have to actually be looking for this what we are saying now huh? so therefore when shil prabhupad came when he was in america you know uh, I, i forgot to tell that example in the bhagavatam he says that sometimes in the night there are stars in the sky but can the stars give light no what gives light the moon so prabhupada used to quote this example ekash chandra tamohanti nachatara sahasra shah so when prabhupada started the movement in america somebody told him swamiji it is better that you learn to wear pant shirt in america otherwise nobody will respect you if you wear this vaishnava dress and they also told him that uh, it is better that you make only three principles instead of four huh? you know no illicit sex if you say in america they will drive you away nobody will follow huh? they said like that mm-hmm. and also they told that uh, you learned american manners and everything when you are in america and prabhupada did not pay any heed to such recommendations huh? and you know, when he went to america you will see that he said i have not come here to please the americans i have come here to teach the pure science of krishna consciousness from bhagavatam he was sticking to it and then eventually he saw even americans and you know uh, people from london and australia and canada and russia everybody is wearing dhoti kurta nowadays mm-hmm. everybody is uh, mataji sir wearing sarees there you can see that you will see that in vrindavan when prabhupada brought the american disciples mataji sir wearing saree prabhu ji is wearing dhoti kurta and they were sweeping the floor in vrindavan and vajabasis were shocked huh? they couldn't believe their eyes people from america are dressed like uh, in vedic dress prabhupada created that a uh, great pa- paradigm shift for them same with uh, pure prasadam indian cuisine prasad prabhupad made it so attractive now in america the cooking classes attracts in many universities 400 500 students for learning indian cuisine cooking huh? yeah. so prabhupad said indians are the fellows who know the best all varieties of prasad nowhere in the world you will get this kind of variety huh? in the vedic variety huh? so even now in columbus if you go to ohio state university i go for a program every time i go so there are 400 450 students come for the cooking classes huh? they learn idli dosa sambar huh? how to make uh, rice and sabji and everything so prabhupad presented the culture of india along with the most important core spiritual message from the shrimad bhagavatam without compromise huh? so in this way shil prabhupad um uh, his contribution is enormous because he made a very stable movement like this con huh? and where very beautiful deities uh, prabhupad installed them and then arranged for panchratri ki worship and the brahman standard in iskon is very high what is become brahman standard in iskon even if you see the harinam standard huh? even to be a harinam dikshit devotee you should be chanting 16 rounds following four regulative principles in this four regulative principles many people may not be aware outside uh, people you know prabhupad made no illicit sex uh, no sex before marriage no sex outside marriage mm. even within marriage people come together for the sake of begetting children and raising them in krishna consciousness huh? and similarly no meat eating means you know no fish meat or eggs huh? and similarly no onion garlic also huh? similarly no uh, Uh, intoxication means no smoking no drinking no drugs uh, so no coffee no tea also uh, so in south india people will faint if you tell them no coffee no tea uh, but rapa they instituted this in america can you imagine uh, people who are uh, drinking liquor now they uh, you know now they are drinking pure milk uh, people who are eating cow flesh now they won't even touch onion garlic is it not a radical paradigm shift uh, so rapa could do that and uh, no gambling Mm. so 
ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ದ್ಯೂತಂ ಪಾನಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಆಸೋನ ಯತ್ರ ಅಧರ್ಮ ಶತ್ರುವಿದ ಸೊ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ದ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಟ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಮೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಹರಿನಾಮ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹರಿನಾಮ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ದೆನ್ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಸತ್ವಗುಣ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಮಗುಣ ರಜಗುಣ ಆರ್ ಡ್ರಿವನ್ ಔಟ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಸತ್ವಗುಣ ಯು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡೈಟೀಸ್ ಯು 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 ಆರ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅಟೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಆರ್ತೀಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾವ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಡೀಪ್ಲಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೀಚಿಂಗ್ you are doing book distribution you become a very fixed up devotee as we say huh? then one is given the brahman diksha after that especially when one is taking serious responsibility commitment in the moment then they go for brahman diksha after that hmm? and uh, see the way prabhupad gave brahman diksha in the society in south india there was a subramanya bharati hmm? so he went to the slum and other places and said why only the brahman should wear this i will give you a sacred thread he got he took lot of sacred threads and put it for all the people living in the slum and said everybody can be brahman so his uh, spirit is good his heart was to you know empower everybody as a brahman but he didn't expect the qualification from them <laughs> isn't it same with gandhi ji also huh? gandhi ji also wanted to encourage uh, at that time some brahmans were proud they were not allowing the people at uh, fourth or fifth class people to come to the temple huh? fourth order people Uh, then uh, because of that gandhi was very upset why you are denying them entry in the temple so i will build uh, temples myself huh? he arranged for in navakali there is a radhakrishna temple gandhi made and then he he and jamnalal bajaj they did a social reform allowing all people to come to the temple which is a nice thing but then uh, he uh, he also said you can become brahman uh, actually he called them by a name hari jan or vishnu jan huh? that kind of name so many social reformers they didn't have clear idea on how to make a human being into a proper brahman you don't become brahman by taking birth in a brahman family hmm? son of a doctor is not a doctor hmm? son of a lawyer is not a lawyer you have to qualify yourself huh? so in this way you will see prabhupada actually gave qualification to people before making them brahmans hmm? you know pure lifestyle when you lead then only you are a brahman so for entering into altar any tom dick and harry cannot enter the altar huh? you know for entering altar one has to qualify brahmanically then only they are allowed to enter so in this way prabhupad made systems for diksha uh, prabhupad made systems for uh, temples to celebrate festivals for the deities uh, such as utsavams and prabhupad established very beautiful deities in all our temples and then he opened the bbt uh, bhaktivedanta book trust and printed hundreds and thousands and lakhs of books uh, all pumping out this much this much book distribution has never happened in the history of this world yeah? Yeah, the kind of millions of books going out we have distributed 60 crore books yeah, in the planet till now uh, so you can see the kind of uh, mass of books which have gone out huh? so proper revolutionized uh, spiritual life in a very very big way uh, in uh, during his time that's an acharya he brought about order not only in india he created holy places in america he went to west virginia and made the new vrindavan there he went to san francisco and made new jagannath puri there similarly he made new talavan he made a new new dwaraka in la los angeles so he was creating new holy places in america so one article came in the btg shila prabhupa transformed a part of the material world into spiritual world like that there is an article such an amazing revolution he did and even the american boys and girls they became so well disciplined by his training by his purity by his affection by his guidance by studying the philosophical purports that he wrote in his books this is another masterpiece of prabhupada this bhagavata you know 18000 verses he gave purport to them uh, very very masterpiece work because prior to shri prabhupada there is no edition of bhagavatam commentary in any language other than sanskrit sanskrit is the only language in which you have you get bhagavata but prabhupad kept all the acharya's commentaries in front of him early in the morning between 12:30 or 1 o'clock he would get up and then he would do till 4 4:30 he would be taking out the vital portions from acharya's commentaries and putting it all together in the bhagavatam purports and that's how he brought the brought out this masterpiece work of bhagavatam and chaitanya charitamrita so 
he has done everything for us. Huh? He has made the books, he has made the very nice temples. Huh? He has also given us uh, GBC, Governing Body Commissioner, as his guru had told. He set up a system of Governing Body Commissioners, which is the leading, uh, it's a ultimate managing authority and ultimate leading authority for all of his con. Huh? They are all the very old disciples of Prabhupada and they are coming together. And below that, Prabhupada made also, you know, other forums like we have uh, Bureau, ICC, uh, and other forums are available. In this way, Prabhupada made a proper uh, uh, administrative structure also. Huh? And then Prabhupada expected that now I have given everything. Huh? Now they just have to... When Prabhupada was in 1977 in the bed, people asked him, Prabhupada, what is your last desire? Prabhupada said, Kuch he said, I don't have any desire because I am very happy that my followers are faithfully taken up to Krishna consciousness. I am confident in my absence, they will run this movement and expand it. Prabhupada was pretty confident and very happy. And then after, when the Acharya leaves, it is said there is a chaos. Now why does the chaos come? Uh, disorder or chaos come? There are various uh, reasons for that. Like, uh, uh, a yeah, preacher should not become greedy to increase the number of followers who are not of proper quality. Hmm? There is a kind of greed sometimes to claim that I have a big number of followers. Hmm? But then if you get followers who are not properly, faithfully following, then the reaction for their sinful actions will come upon us also. Hmm? So one has to be very careful hmm? in increasing followers. There has to be some uh, standard set uh, which everybody should follow. Hmm? But uh, sometimes our movement expanded very rapidly in many places. And then because of people, unscrupulous people coming with motivations, material motives, when they sneak into society, eh, then that can cause, uh, they can cause havoc in the society. Yeah. And also there are people who, uh, after Prabhupada left the planet, uh, went back to Godhead, then they did not study his purports very carefully, the attention, went away from uh, deepening one's Shastric understanding. Uh, from that, attention went to bringing money, you know, running the temples and uh, creating facilities and uh, making uh, life more comfortable. So, uh, this is, this is, therefore, one should understand the difference between structure and substance. So, temple is a structure and the substance is hearing and chanting. So, without the substance, a temple is simply an empty shell. Huh? It, it doesn't have any value. You will see in America, many of the churches and cathedrals, you know, they were actually having these pigeons passing stool, flying, and they were mostly locked up. Huh? Only on Sunday, they would open and a handful of people would come. When Prabhupada went, uh, many of these uh, padres, uh, fathers and brother, and they came to see Prabhupada's lecture. And they asked Prabhupada, Swamiji, you don't have any temple or church, and I am seeing in this uh, ordinary building you are living, and so many boys and young boys and girls are coming and thronging your place. Huh? How is it? So then, when they heard Prabhupada's speech, they understood that the Swamiji is genuine and he is presenting the philosophy very purely huh? about God, what is God, what is soul, and what is sin, and uh, what is to be done. So they themselves became very inspired. And then, and in, even today when I travel in the West, I see some churches have been sold out uh, to become playgrounds uh, for uh, playing some games. Uh, or some of them have been uh, converted into accommodations for, uh, like uh, they have converted them into rooms and they are accommodating some people and making some money, some places. And some churches have been sold and ISKCON has purchased. Uh, why ISKCON purchases churches ready-made in America? There is a reason for that. Because when they make a church, in America there are a lot of protocols, huh? strict, uh, very stringent rules. Huh? Like, you know, the entrance should be like this, and garden should be like this, height should be this much, and, you know, inside also all the electric electrification and, uh, you know, car park area and all that. There are hundreds of rules in America. But when uh, you have a ready-made church, you buy it and you pay them off, then all those rules are already followed by when they made the church. So you don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel again, second time. Huh? So they buy an existing church and then they make it into a temple. Iskon temple. Iskon has purchased in many places like that. So because Iskon has uh, a very, very vibrant activity to do, 
so many we could uh, you know, expand like that in many places so uh, now it is not only with the churches even with iskon also if iskon temples become dull and there are there is not much activity there uh, there is no young blood now people are not uh, getting up in the morning and enthusiastically taking part in spiritual activities and they are not going out on sankirtan distributing prabhas books prasadam distribution book distribution harinam sankirtan uh, and uh, regular classes in the temple regular kirtans in the temple and very lovingly the, the deities are not worshiped and cared for uh, without these things the temple has no substance at all uh. so when prabhupad left the world after that in some of the temples you just make some three four life members in a month and then you got the money for running the temple that month <laughs> and then just you sit and eat and grow a big tummy that's all huh? and uh, there's not much activity and this uh, i'm not only saying is con any organization for that matter the organization loses its soul huh? like that in india in those days one uh, salvation army uh, one christian group came to preach in india uh, so as they were preaching they thought that if we provide material benefits to people we can get a big number so they started collecting Uh, t-shirts pant and clothes from different people and they would accumulate it in the church in big number and they told the poor people all of you come we will distribute this clothes for you freely huh? so a lot of people started coming to the church eventually when those leaders became old and passed away now the successors who came they thought the goal of salvation army is only to distribute the clothes collect clothes and distribute clothes that's the only activity that is prominent there there is no worship of god there is no strength. so this is a problem many times in this world people forget the spirit and they just stick on to the externals it's like for example i ask you one of you hey can you please get me a bisleri bottle and you come and give me a empty bisleri bottle do you want a bisleri bottle here the bisleri bottle i see there is not no any water inside so i may scold you hey i asked for water why are you bringing me an empty bottle You must prove you asked the bisleri bottle. The bis- bottle I brought. Hmm? Hmm? It's a structure without substance. Huh? It's a hollow. Huh? It has no value. So therefore, uh, structure is less important. Substance is more important. Huh? Substance is the most vital thing. So when the practitioners do not have the integrity, um, an honesty, and truthfulness to stick to the teachings of the acharya. Mm? and they neglect the teachings mm? and they ignore the teachings and they become materially oriented this is one reason why a uh, spiritual movement can lose its charm correct mm? like, no uh, another reason i told you like for example when uh, <clears throat> the purpose of prabhupada building beautiful big temples is to attract the masses mm? prabhupada said that if you are sitting under a tree ringing a bell with a small deity who will come there huh? but if you make a very beautiful palatial temple many people come with their families to see the uh, deities and take part in the utsavams and all festivals and all but then there is a risk in this what is the risk when the temple is very opulent <clears throat> accommodations are available nice food is available one may just take advantage of food clothing shelter and then relax huh? and the uh, and the grihasthas will pay donation to the temple they say we have done our dharma huh? and the sadhus living in the temple may just accept nice prasadam from the grihasthas and say we have done our dharma we have eaten prasad in your house we have done our dharma and they will say we have given donation to temple done our dharma both are complacent that's a useless temple isn't it actually sadhus should be renounced and they should go out they should go out distributing the knowledge distributing holy name distributing prasad they should actually wear out their body like a chappal chappal gets worn out isn't it our body mind words are only for lord, lord hari service huh? one should wear out the body for lord service and grihasthas also as they grow in the number of years um, not only should they give donation they come and under service gradually they develop detachment huh? um, detachment from material life and attachment to krishna and as they cross 50 60 their whole focus should go on in a more shravana more kirtana more seva huh? and they become a interface between the sadhus and the outside world and uh, assist in uh, propagating krishna consciousness then that is a very vibrant community huh? that's a real community when there is a pran uh, pran achayar sehetu prachar he said huh? if somebody has a pran then only he will preach otherwise they will become very dull huh? 
So now there is a new thing coming up in the current days con which, uh, which I am observing that it's very good to do Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhava. Huh? It's very nice to do that and Bhakti Vedanta huh? and Bhakti Sarvabhama. Huh? All this is very good because you are studying Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitanya, which is very wonderful. But what happens with some people, they study all the Acharya's commentaries, <clears throat> They go into deeper and deeper study. Some people are taking Sanskrit classes. Some people are taking music classes. Some people are uh, going into books even other than the regular books like Gita, Bhagavatam and CC. And some people are relishing the Acharya's commentaries. Uh, and uh, some of them actually think studying is so important that they even miss the whole morning program. And some of them never ever distribute a book or they never ever preach also. Huh? They never uh, uh, join the Sankirtan of the Sankirtan movement. They become more or less like scholars. Huh? They become like uh, armchair speculators. Huh? And they are not interested in expanding this movement. They think that we got very wonderful knowledge. Just uh, enjoy this knowledge and go back to God. Huh? So they become like Bhajananandis, which is a very great risk actually. This is not what Prabhupada wanted in this moment. Hmm? Prabhupada actually said everybody should go out. Hmm? Uh, the Matha is not for staying. Huh? Matha is giving a facility for just getting up in the morning, attend the program, everybody goes out and does something, some welfare work, paropakar, huh? for the people. So, uh, you will see many Prabhupada disciples, they are elderly, uh, now 78 years old. Although they may not be very scholarly in terms of vast study of the scriptures and deep study of scriptures and knowing all the dozen commentaries of Acharyas, they might not have gotten time to study. But their conviction in Prabhupada's lotus feet, conviction in Krishna is far more deep rooted than even the scholars of our moment many times. So the goal of life is not to become a scholar without devotion. The goal of life is to first become a devotee. If you're a scholar, it's great. Like Gopi Paranadana Prabhu was a great scholar and a very, very advanced devotee and very, very humble. So he had a very amazing combination of scholarship and humility and devotion. So if one can be a scholar like him, that's wonderful. Otherwise, you know, scholarship is going to distract us from what Prabhupada wanted us to do. And another thing that happens in our current day uh, society, why our society can suffer is... Uh, uh, Prabhupada actually respected the temple presidents in America. He called 40 to 50 presidents for a meeting and he would conduct meetings and know how the temples are developing and everything. At the same time, Prabhupada also had meetings with the GBCs. So, now the GBCs are also important. You know, bureau members are important, temple presidents are important, all are very important. At the same time, Prabhupada wanted all of them to work in a very cooperative manner, go together, uh, and not uh, cancel each other's energies uh, by internal collisions or internal differences in opinion. Uh, so sometimes in, uh, in leadership, there are likely to be polarized opinions. Uh, when there are polarized opinions, how to bring about you know, resol resolution of the conflicts. And uh, so when Prabhupada was there, it was very easy. People would just go to him and ask, Prabhupada, he is saying this, I am saying this. Uh, what is it? Like somebody said, Prabhupada, he is saying Ram is Balaram. I am saying Ram is Raghupati Raghav Raja Ram. Huh? Which one is true? Prabhupada said both are true <laughs> in the Maha Mantra. That's all. Problem is immediately solved. Huh? But now it's not the case. Now after Prabhupada left, you can't directly go to Prabhupada and ask what we should do. So there are issues which are taking some years to solve. But if devotees don't respectfully resolve the issues, huh? if they are going to um, blaspheme one another, offend one another, then it creates a cleavage within the society. In, and, and if there are, uh, similarly, there are gurus having followers. If a guru comes to one Iskand temple, all the disciples will come. Huh? Thousands of them will throng the temple. And the guru goes back, they will also go back. Huh? If another guru comes, only his disciples will come. And other people will not come. This is not what Prabhupada wanted. Huh? Actually, the, the devotee should think all the gurus, they are all like mouthpieces of one ultimate guru who is Krishna. Hmm? You know that famous verse. What is that? Vasudeva sudam devam kamsa chanura mardanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat guru. So Krishna is a jagat guru and all the other gurus are uh, able to speak because Krishna is empowering them to speak. 
same message what Krishna would want to give, they are all giving. Hmm? So, it's not that once this, this is a, my guru and all other gurus are not important, that is a neophyte behavior. Hmm? One should be able to see, you know, Krishna, the original guru speaking through the mouths of so many different acharya, current acharyas. One should respect all. Hmm? Then only our society will be undivided and together. Hmm? Because Prabhupada is leading in the front, try to pictureize an army where Prabhupada is the commander in chief. Next to him, all the gurus are Prabhupada is uh, the chief, uh, like Maharati or Atirati, isn't it? And then behind him, all the other chariots. Huh? And behind him, there are leaders uh, on the back of elephants. Huh? Then there are other leaders on the back of horses. Huh? Then there are foot soldiers. Huh? All are going and fighting against whom? Maya. One should see like this. Huh? If you see like that, then we will not hurt each other. Imagine otherwise if uh, uh, Bhima and uh, Arjun start fighting. Bhima is showing his gada to Arjun, Arjun is showing Aira to Bhima. You know, they will cancel each other's energy, isn't it? How foolish it would be. Huh? We are supposed to fight the enemy, not fight with each other. So, uh, within the society, we should not cancel our energies. Huh? So, one, uh, and uh, if we, uh, that's what Prabhupada said, if you want to show your love for me, cooperate with one another to keep the movement together. That's a full statement. Many people don't know the last part. Huh? Prabhupada said, if you want to show your love for me, huh? see, Prabhupada didn't say, if you want to show your love for me, love each other, he didn't say, because loving is very difficult. Huh? He said, cooperate. And not just cooperate. Why should you cooperate? To keep the movement together. Hmm? That should be the goal. We have to keep the movement together. Because the great Acharya, he has started this movement, and we have to protect this movement, not destroy this movement. Huh? Keep the movement together. Which means, make sure... The spirit which he taught us, Shavanam and Kirtanam and Prachar, that is not forgotten. Make sure we don't become an instrument of quarrel, we become an instrument of cooperation within this moment. So another thing, the challenge that our moment faces is, uh, uh, <clears throat> like Srila Prabhupada made some innovations when he went to the West. For example, uh, one day there was a little girl, Saradiya, uh, she came to Prabhupada and said, Swamiji, why only brahmacharis are given accommodation in the temple? We girls have no accommodation in the temple. Prabhupada said, no, girls have to live with parents hmm, at home and then come to the temple and go. Come with your parents and go. You know, like the Prabhupada said. And Prabhupada asked, are you living with your parents? And uh, she had tears streaming in her eyes. Huh? She said, Prabhupada, you are my parent. <laughs> my mother, father divorced long before they left. I am living alone. Huh? And she said, uh, I find it difficult to come in the early morning uh, to the temple. Uh, Prabhupada immediately called the temple president and said, there should be one full floor uh, arranged for the women. So he started a brahmacharini ashram. Huh? There was a brahmachari ashram, there was a brahmacharini ashram. He made a very strict policy that there should be no mixing of brahmacharis and brahmacharinis. Huh? And they should faithfully practice in the temple and they should have a leader who will take care of them. So Prabhupada arranged it. It's a revolution he did. Huh? And then Prabhupada saw that uh, women were as dedicated as men in going out and bringing, I mean, distributing books and, you know, in cooking for the deities and uh, celebrating festivals and worshipping. Even today, if you go to America, many temples you will find Mataji is worshipping the deities very faithfully, many old disciples of Prabhupada. So he made, uh, this is a revolution he made. One, uh, in one place, Prabhupada didn't have a temple. He took one, uh, bungalow and uh, made it into a temple. Some Indian uh, elderly gentleman came and said, Swamiji, you are calling it as a Iskon temple, but where is the Gopuram? They asked. There is no Gopuram. Prabhupada said, see, Gopuram is there or not, what should happen in a temple is happening here. Huh? Darshan is there, Prasadam is there, Holy Name is being chanted, Bhagavad Katha is being distributed. You guys have a stereotyped idea of what a temple is. Huh? In India, Gali Gali Me, you will have a temple. But many temples you will see there are no spiritual books distributed. There is no saintly persons to explain the philosophy. They just have, you know, uh, sometimes they don't have anybody to chant and dance in front of the deities also. And sometimes in Vindavan you find in uh, certain temples they have a machine. Ting, tong, tong, ting, tong, tong, like that makes sounds. They have a drum kind of thing. Huh? Because there is, but on the other hand you will find uh, in our Iskand temple in Vindavan, Krishna Balram temple, you cannot put one mustard seed there. So much crowd, especially in Karthik month. So Prabhupada said, 
This is a real temple. Huh? Temple is not just, uh, you have a beautiful Goparam, but nobody comes there. What is the use? Huh? So Prabhupada was a personality who actually knew how to, according to Desh Kalapatra, modify things. Prabhupada said, right now we are living in a sky rise tower in one of the houses. Huh? I have made this house into a temple. What is the difference between this house and the next house? This house is a temple of Krishna where everybody thinks Krishna is the enjoyer and we all are his servants. And that house is a house for sense gratification because they are not devotees. <laughs> Here all of you are very active, going to market, bringing flowers, making garland for the Lord, making jewelry for the Lord, cooking for the Lord and going out and distributing books and everything. Whereas in that house, you know, they are bringing things, they are bringing a TV, you know, they are uh, bringing some things to play, games. So their goal is sense gratification. Our goal is Krishna's service. So although both the flats may look similar, but the activities that are happening inside are different. So in this way, uh, Prabhupada could take a flat and turn it into a temple. Mm -hmm. So now sometimes uh, uh, after Prabhupada left the world, some people are thinking that why can't we make some innovation in this movement so that this movement can expand very fastly. Like Chanakya says, Vishadapi Amritam Grahyam Amedhyadapi Kanchanam Like that he says, no? Nichadapi Uttamam Jnanam Stishu Dushkuladapi Like that he says, four things Chanakya is saying. Vishadapi Amritam Grahyam means, say, you are going to bathroom, you sit in the commode and pass tool, suddenly your gold ring fell into that commode. And it is in the middle of stool. Now you have to take it out. Correct, no? How many of you will take it out? Only few? Only yeah. Others are doubtful. It's a gold it is. Say gold may be 5 lakh or 10 lakh. Huh? So you naturally have to take out and you can wash your hand after that with soap. Correct, no? Thoroughly you have to wash your hand like that. Similarly, sometimes he says that even from stool you can extract the gold. Similarly, in, even in a low class family, sometimes a very good girl may be born. Sometimes. Huh? Strishu Dushkuladapi. Stri Ratnam Dushkuladapi. Stri Ratnam means what? A girl who is very cultured girl, well behaved girl may be born sometimes in a simple family also. Possible. Then you don't worry too much about the Kulam. Huh? Similarly, he says that Amedhyadapi Kanchanam uh, Vishadapi Amritam Grahyam. So in this way he is saying that Sometimes a person may be low born like Vidura. Huh? Vidura is born to Dasi Putra, but his knowledge is very great. Therefore, Dhritarashtra asked him to speak the knowledge he heard from him. Similarly, uh, sometimes uh, you can also take uh, some good things from even self-help books sometimes. Huh? Like Prabhupada said, sometimes you can take idea from other organizations like Prabhupada said, you can take, uh, they, they are very good in organizing. Huh? Some organizations, Prabhupada said, you can take that idea. One idea you can pick up, you know, something good they are doing. So even from Karmi, sometimes, like Prabhupada quotes Dr. Radhakrishnan once. Huh? Because Dr. Radhakrishnan says, modern education is a big failure. Like that Radhakrishnan says, it is not teaching values, morals. Prabhupada took that quote. So he will quote Radhakrishnan here and glorify Radhakrishnan's statement because he was the president of India. Another place when Radha Krishna will say, Manmana Abha Mad Bhakto, you know, instead of Krishna, you can meditate on something within Krishna, some impersonal Brahman, that Prabhupada will chastise. But the point is, if something is good, Prabhupada knew how to take it. Huh? Sometimes. And Prabhupada, uh, like uh, GBC, for example, where did uh, Bhakti Sansara Thakur get the idea of GBC? From the railways. Indian railways has a GBC system. Same thing. So he took that idea. So, Good things can be taken even from karmis if they have something valuable to offer. At the same time, in the name of innovation and creativity, if we bring about too many new things into this movement, huh, there is a likelihood that we may dilute the message. Huh? Like uh, some people nowadays are teaching spoken English in ISKCON huh, to some people. Initially they will teach some words, P-U-T, put, B-U-T, but they will start with that. And then they will tell them, now let's read proper books now. Huh? And then while reading, you learn Prabhupada books to read, learn English grammar and you become a devotee. Which is very good, correct, no? You can do that. Similarly, Prabhupada also started Sanskrit class in America. Hmm? So one or two months he ran Sanskrit classes, then he stopped the Sanskrit classes, only Hare Krishna class after that. Hmm? It's a good idea, but sometimes, uh, you know, such ideas have to be very carefully employed. 
you may get lost otherwise. Uh, so one has to be very careful. So in the name of innovation, there are many, nowadays people are doing so many things in innovation. So the innovation should not damage the original intended purpose by the Acharya. Hmm? That's very important. Acharya's intention is to make purpose is preaching means giving faith in Krishna. Hmm? Preaching means giving faith in the holy name. Yeah? Preaching means transforming the hearts of the people from being atheistic to becoming a devotee of the Lord. Huh? So, otherwise, if we don't give them the true substance of devotion, Shuddha Bhakti, you know, we will be depriving them of the original substance. Huh? We will be cheating them. So, in this way, innovation, creativity, these things, one has to be uh, very attentive and careful. Otherwise, the movement can become diluted. So, I said many things uh, in, in my talk today about the when Acharya leaves, why chaos sets in? Mm -hmm. So to summarize, one of the things I said about the chaos coming is because the followers become materially attached. Uh, that's like Bhag Bazaar temple mm -hmm. when it was built. Prior to Bhag Bazaar temple, Gaudiya Mat was very small and simple. Mm -hmm. When big temples come and big facilities come, there is a likelihood that people become attached to the facilities uh, and not attached to the lotus feet of the Lord. Uh -huh. They are not attached to seva. One becomes attached to facilities and amenities. So that is one danger. Mm -hmm. And another thing I said was forgetting the spirit and holding on to the shell. Huh? Like I told the Bisleri Bhattal example. Similarly, there are many churches, many temples, many uh, religious institutions where the structure is there, but the substance is forgotten by the people. What the Acharya wanted to hand over. Huh? Our substance is not only Shavnam Kirtanam. Prabhupada wanted Shavnam Kirtanam. And also Jivadaya, Vaishnava Seva, missionary activities. So the mood and mission of the Acharya should not be forgotten. That was the second thing I said. Another thing I told was, uh, third, uh, another point I made was about the cleavage in uh, relationships between the leaders, uh, causing, uh, cancelling each other's energy is a very, very bad thing, unfortunate thing. Prabhupada said, there is no danger for this movement from outside. There is danger from inside. So de devotees should have uh, mutual respect, trust and love. Huh? And they should not hurt one another and create a cleavage. We should remain together to keep the mission together. That was one thing we discussed. Another thing we discussed is about uh, quality and quantity. Huh? While preaching, Prabhupada said you should get moon-like devotees. Huh? Because moon can give light, not the stars. The Jugnu and stars, they cannot give light. So we don't want uh, people uh, who are uh, not interested in Krishna, but who come to this moment with ulterior motives to spoil the moment. No? We, we are looking for moons. And Prabhupada said, even if number is small, don't worry. Like in a diamond shop, you don't get a big crowd. But Sabji Mandi, you get a big crowd. No? That doesn't mean Sabji is better than diamond. No? Isn't it? So similarly, we are giving the costliest thing to the people, Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada said, uh, uh, but eventually, May, uh, the moons will become many moons eh? because the moons will multiply also when you preach. When you get very good quality devotees, then they will also bring similar quality devotees eh? over a period of time. So, we should stick to the pure quality and not dilute the message. That's one thing we discussed. Another thing we discussed was about don't uh, go for creativity and innovations which will deviate us from the original intended purpose with which Acharya started the movement. Eh? That was another thing we said. Like some people say, when Christians came to India, they had schools, they had hospitals, and many people thronged those places. Then they would call them to church. Like that people say, so can't we also do that? Some people ask like that. Actually, you will see that even I studied in a convent in my school days. And we have even said the prayers of the Christians. Oh Lord, hallowed be thy name. Give us our daily bread. We used to just sing this song. Eh? But after school is finished, then you stick to your culture. Eh? You go on with your culture. It's not that simply by going to a school or a hospital, immediately you will become their religious follower. It's not like that. So, sometimes the mass of people, they take material benefits and they maintain their own faiths. Eh? Not that they are going to change, simply by getting these things. Eh? At the same time, if you have a school or a hospital, if you can transmit Krishna consciousness through that, then it makes sense. Otherwise, it has no value. His Holiness Ranath Maharaj in Bhaktivedanta Hospital, once he saw that the, uh, the hospital was becoming a, too much a busy place, huh? it was becoming too much of uh, medical activities, 
And then Maharaj, when he met the leaders, I heard that Maharaj told them that if preaching Krishna consciousness does not remain the main goal, huh, then this then this hospital would be useless, he said. Because then how is it different from the other hospitals huh, and this hospital? Because other hospitals only care for the body. They don't care for the soul. Huh? Whereas in this hospital, after that, they really took it up very seriously. You know, they, now every patient who's lying in the bed can hear Hare Krishna Kirtan just by switching on. Huh? You put on the switch, they can hear Hare Krishna, they can hear Prabhupada's lecture. Huh? And they also have Prabhupada's books available. Festivals are celebrated in the hospital. Many, many people come to hospital for getting treatment and they become devotees and go back. Huh? Similarly, we have a BMS in Pune, Bhaktivedanta Model School. Actually, this this school, every child will be wearing tilak in the morning. You will see they come with Kantimala. First, they will go to the temple and bow down to the Lord, take darshan and go. When they assemble, they have Mangalarati, they have Guru Puja daily. Uh, and uh, Prasadam also is distributed to them in the afternoon time. They take Prasad. And uh, teachings are called integrated approach. Uh, integrated approach means, for example, they want to teach mathematics. So the math teacher will ask, see this picture. How many cows Krishna has around Krishna? Just count. So they'll count. Krishna has, you know, two dozen cows around him. Huh? Like that. So even for counting mathematics, they will see Vrindavan scene. Huh? They will, they will, for example, they're studying water. So the children will put a project about Govardhan. Huh? Because in Govardhan, past time, uh, Indra Shava's reign. Anything connected to water and uh, Krishna consciousness. So children do many, many projects in relation to it's called integrated approach. Integrated approach means along with, you know, history, physics. Like in history, they also teach about all the historical Rajarishi kings. Uh, they teach also. So in this way, uh, if the school can give Vedic education and also bring children to the point of becoming Krishna's devotees, uh, then the school is justified. Otherwise, without that, it is a hollow thing. Without that spirit, we hollow. So therefore, innovation and creativity should only be allowed as much as it serves the intended original seven purposes, purpose statements that Prabhupada has given us. We have to be very alert and attentive. So every one of us, we have a very great responsibility as Prabhupada's follower in this movement to, first of all, be a good example and not just be an example. Um, besides being an example, be willing to take some of the burden of the society accepting some responsibility for some service and also be willing to guide the people who are seeking knowledge and seeking uh, help in spiritual life, you know, be willing to guide and also make an effort to create facilities the way Prabhupada created. Create facility for doing devotional service. Huh? Create facilities, be an instrument and uh, identify what talents and skill sets I have which can be directed in the Sankirtan Yajna, Sankirtan Mission. And every person, every Prabhuji, every Mataji, every boy, every girl, every child should constantly meditate on how we can do that. So to the degree you are able to keep the purpose of Acharya intact, you know, you will get abundant blessings. And to the degree we are deviating from the purpose, we are uh, taking uh, ourselves away from that mercy. So here... Uh, here he says that whenever Acharya comes, following superior orders of the Supreme Personal Godhead or his representative, he establishes the principles of religion. Um, and then Prabhupada says, Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagavad Pranitam, he says. And then he says, one executes religious principles by rendering devotion service, specifically nine items like Shravanam, Kitram and all that. Unfortunately, when the Acharya disappears, rogues and non-devotees take advantage and immediately begin to introduce unauthorized principles in the name of so-called Swamis, Yogis, Philanthropists, Welfare, welfare Workers and so on. The main business of human society is to think of the Supreme Lord, to become his devotees, to worship the Supreme Lord and to bow down to him. The Acharya is an authorized representative of the Supreme Lord. He establishes these principles. When he disappears, things once again become disordered. But the perfect disciples of the Acharya try to relieve the situation by sincerely following the instructions of the Guru, Acharya. And then at the present moment, practically the entire world is afraid of rogues and non-devotees. Therefore, this Krishna conscious movement has started to save the uh, world from religious principles. So one last example I will say and conclude the talk. You know, uh, in the night sky, Prabhupada says, sometimes the stars are shining and the moon is not visible because the clouds have blocked the moon. Similarly, in this Kali Yuga, many spiritual organizations have started and uh, they are not able to give light they are, uh, because they are, most of the organizations nowadays are talking about sattvic life. Huh? 
they say eat vegetarian be good do good be kind be sensitive have nice relationships that's all they talk huh? so they are like stars they can't give enlightenment hmm? but in the midst of such a situation a big a full moon comes out of the cloud sometimes and that full moon is like iskon prabha said huh? so it's a vaishnava moment now krishna is like krishna chandra hmm? Nandavan Chandra, we say, no? Lord is like a full moon. Sometimes a full moon, it's a Chaitanya moment is compared to Gaur Chandra. Hmm? So Prabhupada says that that is a blessing of even in Kali Yuga. Although Kali Yuga is a degraded age, we have the full moon of Gaur Chandra appearing in this time uh, because of which the world has some hope, the ray of hope to awaken love for God even in the, in the degraded age of Kali Yuga. Hmm? Shri Shri Gaur Chandra ki... Shri Shri Radha Vandavan Chandra ki, Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan ki, Shri Jagannath Vasudra Maharani ki, Shri Shri Gaur Nitai ki, Shri Prabhupad ki, Krantrat Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. नव पुष्पर नव भावधर नव गौरवर नव पुष्पर नव भावधर नवलापर नव हास्यकर नव हेम वर प्रणमामी शचि सुत गौरवर नव प्रेमयुत नव नीत शुच नव वेश नव प्रेम रस
Kumkum. He is the ever fresh cupid who shoots arrows of newly blossoming flowers. He bears newer and newer moods of emotional ecstasies. He is fond of performing novel dances. He makes ever new jokes that cause much laughter. His brilliant luster is like freshly cast gold. I bow down to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Shachi. He is endowed with ever fresh love of Godhead. His radiant luster is like the color of fresh butter. His fresh attire is arranged in ever new fashions. He relishes the ever new mellows of love for Krishna. He shines in ninefold the new ways while executing the ninefold processes of devotion. He is permeated with the most auspicious loving nature. I bow down to Gaurav, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. He is absorbed in devotion to Shri Hari. He maintains the chanting of the names of Hari. While chanting, he counts the holy names on the fingers in his hands. He is addicted to the name of Hari. He always has tears of love welling in his eyes. I bow down to Gaurav, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. He is always removing the suffering of material existence for mankind. 
He is the goal of life for persons who are dedicated to their supreme interest. He inspires men to become like honeybees, eager to eager for the honey of Krishna Prema. He removes the burning fever of the material world. I bow down to Gaurav, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. He who motivates pure devotion unto himself, who is most attractive to his beloved servitors. By his dramatic dancing, he exhibits the characteristics of the king of paramours. He causes the minds of the beautiful young village women to dance. I bow down to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. He plays katals as his throat emits sweet melodious sounds. And the vibrant notes of the veena are softly played. He thus inspires the devotees to perform dramatic dancing that is infused with the aspects of his own devotional service. I bow down to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. He is accompanied by the Sankirtana movement, which is the religious practice for the age of Kali. He is the son of Nanda Maharaj, come again. He is an extraordinarily brilliant ornament of the earth. His preaching mood is suitably adapted to the cycle of birth and death. His consciousness is fixed in meditation on his own form of Krishna. He is always accompanied by his transcendental abode. I bow down to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. His eyes, the soles of his feet and his clothing are reddish like the color that heralds the rising sun. As he utters his own names, his voice falters. He awakens the sweet flavor of life throughout the universe. I bow down to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. Shri Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu ki, Shri Shri Gaur Nithai ki, Shri Prabhupada ki.